Hello and good evening everyone and welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers, CACRO, and StriveScan. Just a couple of quick announcements before we get started. First off, you have access to a Q&A button on your screen so you can ask our presenters questions at any point throughout the presentation and your camera and microphone are off so our presenters cannot see or hear you but again you are able to communicate through that Q&A function. This session is just one of many sessions that are happening over these next couple weeks and you can sign up for more at cacro.org c-a-c-r-a-o.org and this recording is also going to be available in about a week on that same site again cacro.org c-a-c-r-a-o Org, and you can also see recordings from some other sessions that have been held over this past week or so on that website. So without further ado, I will go ahead and turn it over to our presenters. All right. Uh, well, thank you. Um, so my name is Cody Shovlin. I'm one of the admissions counselors here in the office at Furman. Uh, I'm joining you today from campus. Love the Paladins, but I don't know if I could you know, commit to the full bell tower wall art <laughs> in my own home. But um, I'm excited to be here. We've got almost 100 students registered, which is exciting. I'm excited to chat with y'all. Um, and so what's going to happen is I'm going to share my screen and go through a couple slides with you, tell you all about Furman, the experience, the application process, all sorts of stuff. Um, as we're going through that, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. You've got the Q&A function that was already mentioned, so please feel free. Uh, my colleague, Melissa Klein, is uh, joining me as well. I'll be doing all the presenting, and then she'll be handling a lot of the Q&As while I'm presenting. And if we have any time at the end, uh, we might be able to address a few there as well. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we can get started. All right, uh, so some of the basics to start us off. Uh, we are located in Greenville, South Carolina. You can see it on the left hand side of the screen. Greenville is, you know, I assume most of us know, but <laughs> for those of us who don't, uh, about as far from the ocean as you can get in South Carolina. About uh, three hours from Charleston. We're about a half hour south of the Blue Ridge Mountains, uh, two hours-ish northeast of Atlanta, in about an hour and a half from Charlotte. Uh, we're in, I think, a great location. Greenville, South Carolina is uh, a wonderful place to live. On one end, you've got a lot of really great business interests. Greenville is home to uh, Prisma Health, the largest health system in South Carolina, as well as the North American headquarters for BMW and Michelin uh, and a few others. So there's a lot of good business interests, but then on the other side of things, it is the type of city, you know, you walk around and you look around and you think, you know, it just seems as though the people who planned the city are the people living in the city and planned it just the way they wanted to. I think it's fantastic. Uh, if you are joining from a laptop or computer, I would, you, I would encourage you uh, to open up another tab and just Google image search Greenville, South Carolina or Greenville Main Street or Falls Park is another really big one. Um, but it's a wonderful place to live. Great uh, theater, great food, great people, great universities. Hello, right? Um, and I think it's a good tool for you too, you know, when you're thinking, do I want to come to Furman? And do I want to have that type of experience? Because you've got, and especially with small liberal arts options, you've got great options in, you know, the Bostons and the Chicago's of the world and the larger cities. And you have great options in the middle of the woods. <laughs> like notoriously so. And I don't think any of that is better or worse than the next school or what Furman has to offer or Greenville. I think it's all about, you know, fit and what you're looking to get out of your, your experience. So if um, we're able to, you know, in the future when we're able to host you on campus for a campus visit, I would encourage you to take a little time before or after to even just drive down Main Street and see what, what Greenville, what the talk is all about because there's a lot going on. Uh, and then on the right hand side of the screen, you've got a lot of just quick facts for you. Um, the first, about 2,800 students total. And that, we say we're, we're on the bigger side of small. Uh, I've got a couple colleagues who say schmedium. 
can't quite take myself seriously when I say sh medium, but <laughs> uh, bigger side of small will do. Um, and it's the type of environment where you're going to walk to class and you're going to see people you know, see people whose faces you recognize, see people you've never seen before. Uh, I was a student at Furman. I graduated in 2015 uh, and I was meeting people in my year weeks leading up to graduation. I was thinking, you know, where have you been hiding for four years? It's not that big of a campus now, you know. Uh, so you always have room to kind of grow like that, which I really appreciated. We've got about 48 states represented in our student body and our admissions team. We've got 12 counselors who travel around the country, usually around this time of year, uh, visiting high schools, attending college fairs, chatting with students uh, to get this well-rounded group. So it's about you know, all of September and October, probably two months in the fall usually, and then a month in the spring. Hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit of that spring travel in this year, but we'll just have to take it one day at a time, won't we? Uh, and then about two to 3% of our student body are international students coming from about 22 countries, 60 plus areas of study. Furman is a liberal arts institution, uh, meaning no matter what it is in which you major, you're gonna be taking a wide swath of general education requirements kind of across the board. It's gonna be, a nice, well-rounded foundational education before you then dive in. Um, it leaves students a little bit of time once they get to college to then decide what it is they want to study. Um, and then you have the flexibility to change as well, which is um, important to a lot of students. Average class size, 15. Uh, your first year courses are probably going to sit mid-20s, mid to low 20s. I never had a class larger than 30 when I was a student. Um, and, you know, like I said, usually 15, you know, at most of those first year courses kind of mid to low 20s. Participation is a part of every grade that you would receive from Furman. Professors hold office hours, they want to connect with you. And just as you would choose Furman, you know, our professors also chose Furman. They didn't wake up one day and think, oh my God, I went to small liberal arts school or medium liberal arts school. I have to get to know these students. You know, it's something that they, opted into just as you would. So they're pretty enthusiastic about it. When we are usually able to have visitors on campus, our students will lead you around campus for about two hours, hour and a half, two hours. Uh, and then when you return to the Welcome Center, we'll come up, our admission staff will come up just to chat and connect and here's my business card and answer questions. Uh, and when I get back and, and ask students about the tour when they're getting back to the office, they, one of the things that pops up in almost every conversation is going to be, you know, how the, the student tour guide mentioned that faculty student relationship. And they really spoke to that or told us about that. It was important to us too. You know, they were happy it came up. So it's something that's pretty true uh, to the student experience, which I love for our students. And then on the bottom left here, 100% residential. So you've got typically how that plays out is res halls for two years and then apartments for two years. Uh, if you are joining us from Greenville, you can, we're really probably 99.6% residential. We've got a few commuter students, students who have immediate family in the Greenville area. So if that might be you, you could certainly appeal to be a commuter, but most of our students, the very great majority are on campus. And again, that's res halls for two years and then apartments for two years. Uh, if you search in YouTube, if you search Furman Housing, there's a really good probably five minute video all about you know, the housing options. You can see the inside and what students have done with it. It's a good resource for you as well. And then we've got about 20.4% of our students who are students of color. That would also include international students. Um, so again, trying to get you know, that well-rounded group, not just in sense of you know, 48 states represented, but making sure that you, know, you are at this. I have a, colleague at Swanee um, who has a wonderful analogy. She says that when they you know, admit students to their incoming class, they're trying to build a dinner table, right? And, and this dinner table is just dinner for 500 this time, right? Um, so they're trying to get a well-rounded group, somebody that you can enjoy conversation with, meet, learn from, somebody from a you know, different area, different background from you, might be sitting across from you at dinner. And I, so I think we're trying to do the same at Furman. I think it's great. And then Division I across the board. Uh, Furman is in the Southern Conference. Games are free for students, which is a lot of fun. You'll have the, you know, the tailgate experience, certainly, and you know, people going to the games and dressed in purple and painting up for the big games. That's exciting for a lot of students. Uh, so that's Furman in a couple, couple minutes here.
Um, we're going to move on. I can't get too much further without talking about the Furman Advantage. Uh, and if anybody's joining us on the call today who has been to Furman for a campus tour before, uh, this probably sounds familiar. The Furman Advantage is effectively our promise to you. In short, it's a promise that your four years are not going to look like your roommates four years, are not going to look like your, you know, classmates four years, somebody in your, your you know, Tuesday, Thursday class or somebody in the major, they're going to be catered to you, you know, and your goals, your experiences, where you are in your journey, your aspirations. And so how we do that, and you can see on the screen here, the couple diamonds, four-year personalized pathway sums it up pretty well. That second diamond, the high impact experiences, so research, internships, and study away. Furman students have guaranteed access to all three types of these experiences, so it's our promise to you you know, we won't make you do any of them, but you, you know, we promise if you wanted to do one or two or all three, we're going to make it happen. You know, at, cer at certain points in your four years and you'll, you know, how and when, you know, to take advantage of those experiences, but that guaranteed access piece is big for a lot of students. That uh, third diamond, the team of advisors and mentors is big as well. Uh, and Furman for years, we've had, you know, the academic advisor where you come to Furman, you declare a major, you'll have probably a professor in that department who's going to be your advisor for four years. Uh, we've had it. We still have it. It's been great. We'll continue to be. Um, but now with the Furman Advantage, students are also, in addition to that, connected to alums in the field that they're looking to go into, uh, mentors in the Greenville area. And all of those connections are facilitated by their on-campus advisors at certain points in the four years. Um, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. So you, the student, talking with one alum or one mentor from the area. Um, and so you really do get to see, you know, how is my degree going to look in five years or 30 years? And what are the decisions these people have made? How has it impacted their journey? It's, you know, so many of the, the opportunities and the resources offered, offered at Furman, you know, obviously concern themselves with the four years you would spend with us. But so many, if not all of them, are also really looking at how are we setting you up? You know, and, and for long term, you know, vocational success, not just, you know, let's get you on a payroll, but how are we talking, you know, long term and looking at career focus and, you know, getting you the best, you know, footing possible for that next step. Um, so that's a little bit of the your advantage. I do before we want to, or the, the firm and advantage. Uh, before we get to the next slide, I want to come back to that second diamond here, these high impact experiences. Uh, so I think it's worth mentioning with research internships and study away, we had 92% of our graduating class this past May participate in at least one of those experiences. Uh, again, guaranteed, we this past summer, in the midst of COVID, had the greatest number of Furman fully funded research fellows um, in Furman history, which is great. And so the fellows program that I'm alluding to, we have a summer research and internship fellows program, which is a really good way to finance, especially those internship and research experiences, uh, because so many of those experiences are summer experiences. And we know not every student can take a summer off of going home and getting a job and saving up. And, you know, so with the fellows program, students get greatly discounted room and board. And then they earn up to three and a half thousand dollars over the course of the summer in stipends to be able to have some spending money for the next year. So that's great. Uh, so this past year we had the most research fellows in school history. We had over 220 fully funded research fellows. Mind you, the, you know, the student body is 2,800. I think that is far and away very impressive. You know, everybody's got, you know, research. But when you look at number of students involved, number of programs involved, number of dollars put to funding, I think it's exceptional what, what we've been able to do here. Uh, every department on campus participate in some sort, participates in some sort of undergraduate research. Uh, only about half of it is in the the sciences, so that, you know, chemistry, biology, what you think of, what I think of when I first think of research with test tubes and chemicals and all that. And it certainly is about half of it, you know, is in the sciences, but about half of it is split between the social sciences, the humanities, the arts at times are getting involved. So there's a lot to look into, which is great. And I think with those three experiences, especially, it's a lot of very good individual attention. You're able to go to the, the internship office, for example, and say, you don't have what I want, you know, let's figure it out. Or this is the experience I want, regardless of if Furman does or does not have a connection. Uh, and so they'll help you, you know, kind of work towards that goal. 
you, know, you can go in and say, this is what I want to do when I grow up, so to speak. Uh, you know, what do you got? And they'll, you know, start the conversation there. You can go into the internship office and say, what's an internship? Yeah, you know, I've heard that word, you know, be very square one and they're going to meet you there too. They want to meet with you and meet with you early. You know, that first, second semester on campus. Not that they can promise the, the dream internship after just a year on campus, but they would so much rather have the time, you know, where they can build on it and tell you, this is how you scaffold certain experiences to be competitive and to get to where, where it is you want to go, right? Uh, and same with study away. You can go in and say, Furman doesn't have the program I want. Let's figure it out. Uh, and then they'll help you work, they'll work with you to, you know, connect you to some third party providers and, and get a program that suits your needs. So, uh, I think we'll be ready to move on with that. Live to learn. So this is a great slide. This is all about the, the student experience, the out of classroom experience. Uh, so the first point we've already touched on 100% residential. Um, you know, like I mentioned, it's two years in res halls, two years in on-campus apartments. So you get a nice kind of you know, transition there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's a random assignment roommate process. So your first year as you're coming in, you be automatically assigned or randomly assigned to a, a first year roommate just based on uh, a housing survey that's sent to you the summer between high school and college. And that survey will ask questions like, do you like the room cold? Do you go elsewhere to socialize? Do you wake up early? Are you messy? I think no wrong answers, um, except the dishonest ones perhaps, but, and then they kind of pair you up from there. Uh, and then over 165 clubs and organizations. Uh, and when I'm traveling typically in the fall, I'm, you know, in different areas, going to your high school, college fair, different events, and students ask, you know, what type of student comes to firm? What type of student thrives? How would you describe the students? I say our students tend to get pretty well involved, uh, you know, kind of across the board. And I think a big piece of that, a big reason why that is, is because they all live on campus. So for four years you're with, you know, unless you're from Greenville, you're with everybody who's important to you in Greenville, just right here on campus at most a 15 minute walk from you. Um, so you tend to you tend to stay pretty pretty connected to the experience when you give back through those different clubs and organizations. Uh, with we get a lot of questions about Greek life, Greek life at Furman. We've got about forty to forty five percent of our students who are involved in Greek life every year. It's a deferred recruitment process. So what that means is you could at the earliest join in the in January of your first year on campus. Uh, we have that first semester kind of partitioned off so that you can kind of go through the academic transition, maybe get involved in some other things, kind of develop that support network, and then add the Greek life piece later on if you want. So there you go. And the, the, the intake process is designed in such a way that you can come in and be super enthusiastic and be, um, you know, going to all of these get to know you events with different fraternity or sorority members, you know, right from the start. Or you could say in January, you know, I think I'll do it. Yeah. Let's see what this is all about and kind of join there. So you've got some time to decide with that. Um, but whether it's Greek life or religious or spiritually affiliated organizations, club sports, political groups, I mean, all these little niche clubs, there's so much going on uh, for our students on campus kind of just day in, day out, which is great. And then Greenville, fourth fastest growing city in the country. Uh, I believe that was per the U.S. Census in 2010. Um, so we'll have to see. Stay tuned next year for the next census. Um, but again, you know, wonderful city to get to be a part of for, for a couple of years. And for those of us who have not been able to visit campus, Furman is not integrated into the downtown of, of Greenville. Furman's about five miles north of the, the kind of city center. Um, so it's a 10 minute drive. We've got a wonderful biking and walking trail as well. That's a direct line uh, into the heart of Greenville. Um, but Furman's campus is kind of removed. Uh, we moved to our current campus. We, like I was a part of it in any way, uh, they moved to this campus in the 1950s um, to accommodate all of our students on campus as residential students, get the athletic complexes on campus. Uh, so we've been here for about 70 years. All right, so moving on, we've got uh, the application process for our seniors on the call. We've got a lot going on. Um, 
so we'll start, we'll kind of work left to right on the slide. So the required materials. Uh, first, the application, perhaps obviously, right? Uh, and Furman does not have a Furman specific application. You're not gonna you know, go to our website and look at an application that Furman has built for you to, for you to complete. Rather, Furman is on the Common App or the Coalition application. So you have two options there. Uh, if those don't sound familiar, these are applications accepted by hundreds of colleges and universities across the country uh, and around the world. So it's you know, really what it is, is kind of streamlining the process, making it pretty low maintenance for you. Uh, for example, if you're applying to five Common App schools, you only have to fill out your mailing address and your social and your name, you know, all the kind of preliminary stuff once to be able to apply to those five schools. Uh, so you can apply either way, Common App or Coalition. And that's the only piece that you really need to worry about. The transcript and the school report that you see right under it, those are documents that your school is prompted to send us once you submit your application. So once you submit, your school counselors will be sending your transcript and the school report, which is just kind of a brochure about your high school just to give us context for your application. Um, and then with optional materials, you're welcome to submit any of these. You're welcome to submit none of these. You're not disadvantaged either way. You know, we're not gonna get the application and say, you know, Melissa didn't submit you know, any letters of reg. That must not, and she couldn't get one person to write her. You know, that's not the case at all, but they could add wonderful context. So if you have somebody who wants to be able to have a voice in your application file, you are welcome to do it and send it our way. Uh, with test scores, that would be SAT, ACT. Uh, Furman is what you call a test optional institution, um, which is all the rage as of, as of late. But with test optional, Furman has been test optional for about 10 years. Uh, test optional applicants are you know, still eligible to be considered for all of Furman's scholarship opportunities. Uh, you know, there's no extra essay or interview associated with being a test optional applicant. It's a really good option for you. Um, Furman's averages with our admitted students this past year the students who decided um, to submit scores with their applications, the middle 50% of those scores fell between 1260 and 1380. So a lot of 1200 scores, a lot of 1300 scores, uh, with about a fourth of our admitted students with scores falling above that range and then a fourth below. So I think thinking about that, you know, is important. A lot of students find, find themselves in this gray area of, should I submit? Should I not? I don't know. Um, I would encourage you to talk to your counselors at school. I would encourage you to reach out to your admissions counselor at Furman. I mean, we can absolutely walk through that process, give you as much information as possible to make an informed decision. We certainly wanna make you, uh, make sure that you, um, you know, as best served as possible through the process. Your admissions counselor kind of acts as your advocate, that person in your corner uh, on our end, so. Um, and then resume and or any other writing samples, um, you know, please feel free to email them to admission at Furman.edu or your counselor. Um, we can be, we can certainly add that to your file as well. All right, so you will have, you know, completed the application, getting ready to submit. So we'll move over to the right table here. You've got what we call application rounds. Uh, and so we'll go through those for just a second as well. So early decision one and two, these are binding agreements. So when you apply ED1 or ED2, effectively you're saying, I promise if I get in, I'm, gonna, I'm coming to Furman next year. Um, and so you're, you're making that commitment, that's great. Um, you know, if I'm just blowing you away this evening with this fantastic virtual information session and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Furman is it, Great option, right? No. Um, and you're making that binding commitment before you know exactly what the finances are gonna shake out to look like. And that's the next thing that we're gonna talk about is cost of attendance, scholarship and aid. Um, so you're making that you know, locking in commitment before you know exactly what the money piece is gonna look like. You're not at all disadvantaged through that process. We're not gonna get the, the application and say, you know, oh, Abby, Abby's locked in. You know, so we're not gonna give her the, the aid that she qualifies for the the scholarship that she's earned you're still fully considered fully awarded um, you know but again important piece to have on the radar early action regular decision also great options early action you'll apply by december 1st regular decision it's by january 15th uh, early action is typically or historically it's been about twice the size of regular decision as far as applicant pool size um, you know, as far as acceptance rate, academic averages, there's really no discernible difference. They're pretty, pretty similar applications, applica applicant pools. 
Uh, the deadline, the middle column in that right table, I'll mention too, that's just the date, again, by when you need to submit the application. Your piece, right? All the other pieces, the transcript, the letters of rec, um, any other writing supplements, school report, all of that can come in the week or two after that deadline. Um, that's just the date by when you need to do your part, right? Uh, and then the notification date, I always make sure to, to pause here as well, just to say with early action, by, you know, for example, you'll apply by December 1st. It says you're gonna hear back by January 15th. That's not a rolling date. And by rolling, I mean, we're not releasing decisions throughout you know, the, the fall semester generally. Uh, rather, all of our early action students are gonna hear back on the same date, probably a week or two before January 15th. So, and I just mentioned that because I don't want you to you know, apply tonight again, because you're so blown away by this information session I'm so excited to press submit. And then, you know, come mid-December, you're thinking, you know, oh no, I haven't heard, Is, that's not good. That's, you know, that's, that's not indicative of anything on our end. Uh, everybody's gonna hear back at once. And again, a week or two before the dates you see on the right-hand side of your screen. And then a week or two after that, we're gonna be in touch with your financial aid package. So let's talk about it. Uh, so Furman is about $66,000 per year. A couple things to mention first, 66 is pretty much all in. I mean, that is tuition, room, board, and fees. Uh, things covered in 66 would be printing, access to laundry facilities, infirmary services, counseling center, peer tutoring, IT, research assistance, writing and media lab. All of it is, I don't, I don't wanna say free, I'll say prepaid <laughs> through the fees. It feels very free. Uh, but students really day-to-day -day are not spending money on campus. Beyond 66, you'll buy books twice a year. And that might be it, folks. So that's the first point. And then the second point I want to mention to you, too, is that very few students are paying 66 to come to Furman. Uh, we, on average, last year with this, the students who decided to enroll at Furman, we were offering them about thirty-six, thirty-seven thousand dollars $37,000 in financial assistance. And that's the combination of need-based financial aid and then merit-based scholarships. So there's a lot of factors there. Um, you know, that's not to say, you know, I promise, you know, you can expect about 36, you know, please don't email our dean and say, Cody promised me 36 at the CACRO College Fair, so if you could make it happen, you know. Uh, but that is to say, if, if 36 is the average, usually we're able to change that conversation from 60. Uh, what you've got on the right-hand side of the screens are kind of how we change that conversation. Um, so with the admission scholarships, first I'll lead with, you know, the, there's no separate application process for any of these scholarships. That was music to my ears as a high school senior, no extra essay or any of that. Um, the Towns, Hollingsworth, and Duke awards that you see on the screen, these are Furman's largest merit-based awards. Furman in total awards about 50 of these scholarships uh, every year. So these are the top you know, one, two percent of our applicant pool, very academically driven, very competitive, and great options for those students. Uh, Bell Tower scholarships are much more accessible, much more common among our admitted students. Bell Tower scholarships historically have ranged from five to twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, and they're just included in your financial aid package, which again comes about a week or two after your admissions decision. Uh, and then you have talent-based scholarships: so athletics, music, ROTC. Uh, a couple days after this evening's session, we are going to shoot you an email just to say it was great to connect and would love to continue the conversation. Um, and if you might be, you know, one of these talent-based scholarships, athletics, music, ROTC, please, you know, feel free to respond. We can absolutely connect you to the right people, get you the right information, answer you the questions. Uh, you would love to, to continue on with that. Uh, and then a note about need-based aid on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Uh, it, Furman does not require that you submit the FAFSA and the CSS profile to be considered, or in order to be considered for admission. Uh, however, if you wanna be considered for financial aid, for the need-based financial aid, we require that you submit both. So if you don't look, if you're not looking to be considered for need-based financial aid, that's, this isn't a piece that you'll need to worry about. Um, but if you do wanna be considered, you'll have to submit both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, we've got a great how to apply for financial aid 
uh, web page uh, for prospective students on our website. So please feel free to check it out. It's got good dates and deadlines, links to the, the profiles for men's institutional code. Um, there's a lot going on. All right, that might be it. So that's about all I've got as far as prepared slides. I see we've been putting you know, some questions in the chat, putting my colleague Melissa to work here. Let's see if we can't answer a few of those. So we've got a question here. Um, oh, this is a great question. So if a student applies ED, so again, that binding agreement you're locking in, right? Uh, you know, what happens if you apply ED, you decide to come, and then you're not offered enough scholarship to enroll? Um, and that's a great question. That's why I mentioned, you know, be sure to pause and think, you know, I'm locking in before I know what the money piece looks like. And, um, you know, it's, I think, important to have a little bit of flexibility there. You, like I said, you're not disadvantaged. You're still going to be fully awarded. You're going to be getting just as much aid and scholarship as you otherwise would have applying early action, you know, for example. Um, so if that is at all, you know, a piece of your consideration, I would encourage you to open that conversation perhaps with your school counselors. Uh, reach out to your admissions counselor. Um, you can go to our, we've got a net price indicator or net cost indicator on our website. Uh, which is pretty accurate. So you're welcome to go there. I mean, we want to make sure that you have all the information we can give you up front so that you can and make, you know, that informed decision. Um, we've got another question. Does Furman offer talent-based scholarships for art? Unfortunately, we do not. Um, we would love to continue the conversation, connect with you. The art department's great at reaching out and connecting with students, even at this point in the, you know, the process, the journey, this isn't something, these, those are not conversations exclusive to you know, admitted students later down the line. Um, I, part of my role in this office, I coordinate our fine art recruitment. So I work a lot with Furman's music department, Furman's art department and Furman's theater department. Um, so if that might be you and you want to learn about how to connect and how to, you know, either, you know, with me and talk about the, either we've got music auditions, so we can talk about that process. Uh, or if you want to connect with students or faculty in any of those departments, please feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, again, my name is Cody Shovlin. Contact info is on the website. Would love to hear from you and connect. Um, so yeah. What is the deadline for the music scholarship? Is it virtual or in person? My area of expertise. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> um, so the deadline, the, the, the audition process this year is going to be all recorded auditions. So you're going to record ahead of time. And what will happen is you first need to apply to Furman. You need to submit your admissions application. Uh, after you do that, you're going to gain access to your online status checker, kind of like home base for everything about you know, your Furman admissions application. In that status checker is where you'll need to complete the registration for the recorded audition. You'll need to do that by January 24th. And then you need to send us the media that's going to come along with that audition uh, by February 10th. So, and there's still a couple details being ironed out in that process. We should have that information ready and we'll be sending it out to you uh, in the next couple weeks here. Um, so just sit tight, but know that it's going to be all recorded auditions. Um, the faculty in the music department, oftentimes I connect with respective students after they have because they are so proactive and want to have that conversation. And um, so you're welcome to, you know, reach out and get started and um, connect at any point. How is Furman, next question, how is Furman handling the pandemic? Good question. Um, if you want to go to Google and search Furman Focused, there is a fantastic web page. I would search Furman Focused and I would search Furman COVID dashboard and you can see everything that we're doing. But the quick and short of it, uh, we, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we gave students the option to be remote learners this semester for the full semester. About 13% of our student body took us up on that. So we've got about 87% with us now on campus. And we did a staggered move in. So we had seniors and freshmen move onto campus in mid-August. Uh, and then our sophomores and juniors joined them about a week and a half ago. Um, 
And of all of our courses on campus, about 30% of them are completely virtual. They will never meet this semester in person. About 70% are doing what we call the Furman Flex, where half of the, the course is gonna come to campus or come you know, to the, the classroom uh, for a given you know, class period. And then the other half will zoom in uh, and then they'll switch and kind of alternate like that. They've also adjusted the pedestrian flow of a lot of the buildings just to you know, be a little bit more intentional there. They have outfitted the classrooms with millions of dollars of you know, new technology and hardware to make this something that we're gonna be able to do. We can have the infrastructure to continue you know, this virtual engagement at a pretty high level. Um, and in all the planning, the summer and the spring and continuing to fall, I've been really impressed not only with the different areas, how many different things that, that the planning committee has thought through, whether it's meals or dining or campus safety or events or you know, the academics, you know, whatever it is, they've thought through quite a bit and they did not forego thinking through, you know, we have all these health measures, but how are we gonna you know, continue to, to offer a worthwhile student experience and make this a semester in which our students are still going to be able to enjoy themselves and connect and be able to learn and grow outside of the classroom and they've done quite a bit there as well as hearing from one of our current students this past Friday. Uh, she had a wild night out on the North Village intramural field where they put up a big blow up like drive in movie screen um, and then distributed hula hoops throughout the field um, so that you know you weren't too close, you know, to your neighbor uh, and they watched Jaws. So that's a lot of fun. So they're doing a little, you know, some things like that, different like food, food truck pop-ups on campus. Um, you know, so there's a lot going on. But it, that web page again is Furman Focused or Furman COVID Dashboard has all of Furman's current numbers. It has percent of campus quarantine space in use right now. It, you know, it's got a lot of good information for you. Next question, what was my favorite? Oh, I like this question. What was my favorite thing about attending Furman as a student? My favorite thing about Furman, I think is gonna be on a superficial level, the proximity to cookout. Fantastic spot, folks. Uh, my freshman year, they built a cookout two miles down the road. It was one of the worst things to happen to me. Um, I never lacked a friend for late night fast food. I could always grab a buddy and boy did I. <laughs> so love a good cookout tray. But I think my favorite thing about Furman kind of on a more serious note is going to be that uh, four year residence requirement. Because you just you feel so connected to the student experience, you know, you know, obviously a lot of people on campus, your peers, your friends, but whether you know somebody or not, you're going to know their experience to some extent, right? You're walking the same sidewalks, you're going to the same dining hall, using the same library, studying for the same tests. So it's you know, it, it feels like this shared experience. Um, I think it does a lot, like I mentioned earlier, the way our students get involved, I think, you know, is, is really bolstered by the fact that our students all live on campus. I think sense of campus safety, right? And it's the type of, you know, environment where as a student, I left my, my door unlocked for four years, right? You know, I left my laptop unattended in the library for hours and wouldn't, you know, think twice about it, which is not, you know, an official message of the Office of Admission, not part of the guarantees of the firm and advantage, but that's just to say that's, the, that's the, the feeling that you get throughout the experience that you're connected, you know, to a pretty strong community. Um, next question, we have a theater scholarship as well. I think the answer is no, but I just wanted to confirm the answer is no, unfortunately. Our theater department did just start showing virtually uh, their first main stage production of the year. It's called Love and Information. Um, so I would check out like check out their Instagram page or their website. You want to um, get a virtual ticket and see what they're up to. Pandemic hasn't stopped them from continuing to make theater. If I have dual enrolled, this is our next question. If I have dual enrolled with our local community college, my junior and senior year of high school, will Furman be willing to accept those credits? And if so, how many? Um, how many total credits can I transfer in? Thank you for that question, Caroline. Um, you in total are gonna to be able to transfer in 64, um, which comes out to about two years of full course load at Furman. So we wanna make sure that you're, um, you're still earning half, if not most of your degree from the university, from Furman, but you can 
transfer in as many as 64 credit hours. Usually those courses are four credit hours a piece. Um, <clears throat> As far as what we'd be willing to accept, it's a case by case basis. And so, and the reason it is, is because we wanna make sure that the integrity of a firm and degree is upheld. So what'll happen is you, regardless of if we are, we're able to accept your dual enrollment courses for course credit, uh, the fact that you opted into that higher level experience is gonna benefit you through the application process. So even if we're not able to award for any course credit, um, the fact that you, you know, are not just taking your regular placement we're looking at either you know dual enrollment or maybe it's honors or ap ib whatever that looks like at your school you're going to be benefited through that or through the application review process um, for having opted into those experiences um, and then after you would be admitted this year if you want to reach out we can continue the conversation with our registrar um, who they'll, they'll probably request some syllabi some course work examples um, and then go through the rest of that appeals process with you. Our next question, would our music scholarship be in addition to any other scholarship offers? Uh, the answer is yes. The music scholarships in the past, and I believe this year as well, are gonna be five or $10,000 that stack right on top of any other uh, merit-based scholarships or need-based aid that you receive. Our next question from Elizabeth, how does Furman prepare their pre-med students? The shortest answer is well, very well. Uh, it's one of the largest academic areas of interest on campus. Our Furman's uh, acceptance rate in the med school on average is 20 to 25 percentage points higher than the national average uh, for med school acceptance rate. So I think it's one of those things that, you know, if you're looking to come to Furman for health, pre-health, whether that's pre-med or pre-dent or pre-PT or pre-vet or whatever it is, um, you know, it's a great option. I think it'd be a great fit. So, and if Elizabeth, if you want to shoot me an email after this presentation, I've got, or anybody else as well, I've got about a 25 page PDF with far more information than you will ever want to know about pre-health at Furman, but you will have it and you can definitely look at all the details and we can connect you from there. All right. I mean, we have time for one or two more questions. Um, could I take classes that are outside of my major? I know some colleges don't let you, and other colleges let you take whatever class as long as you complete all your credits. Uh, good question, Caroline. So at Furman, you'll be required to take certain, you know, certain you know, group of courses for your major, major requirements, courses you'll need to take to be, to complete that, you know, biology major, or that sociology major. Uh, you'll also need to take a set of courses to complete your general education requirements. Um, and Furman's general education requirements are all categorical. Certain courses across campus and different disciplines have been flagged as certain general education requirements um, or flagged as you know, fulfilling those certain general education requirements. So you have a little bit of choice there, which is great. Um, you know, but when you add up major requirements and gen ed requirements, there is usually for students a little bit of wiggle room uh, to then you know, take those courses that they're just interested in, those courses that they would take not to the end of fulfilling gen ed or major requirements, but just because they, they're they interested in the subject matter. So you certainly would be able to. Um, next question here, does Furman have a good psychology major? Um, I would say we do. And I, I really mean that. It's a, I think a really, it's a great program. You, um, you know, obviously you're gonna be in the classroom for a good bit, but you're also, and one of the things I think you characterize Furman psychology uh, as, you know, having, or being able to offer students is the fact that it, it's a very hands-on experience. So from your first courses in the major, you're gonna be in the classroom, but you're also gonna be in the lab and running experiments and doing research. Um, and it's, I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna put you to work. It's a great education, right? Um, and I think it ought to be. Uh, but it is one of those students say like, oh, you're a psych major, you know, it's, so it's a great program, a good education. I would encourage you to check online. You can see what, you know, the professors are doing with research projects, how they're folding in students to that. With any of our programs, you're able to look around uh, at the course requirements and course descriptions and, and see what's offered as well. So that's about all we've got for today. If I wasn't able to answer your question, I'm, I hate I wasn't able to get to all of them. Um, but like I said, you're gonna get an email in a couple of days saying it was great to connect. Um, and we would love for you to hit reply and you know, ask that question again, and we can continue on.
So with that, I will turn it over because I hear we got a serious 45 minutes stop. All right, great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Again, if you uh, were not able to have your uh, question answered by our presenters this evening, they're actually gonna get a transcript as well of all of the questions that you asked. So um, they'll get that in about a week. Um, so it's possible um, that you, you can follow up that way as well um, and uh, definitely email. Um, as far as a quick thing I want to share before we close out this webinar, there is going to be a quick survey with four questions when you um, close out this window. So we'd appreciate it if you fill that out. And you can also sign up for more sessions at cacro.org, C-A-C-R-A-O.org. And this recording is also going to be available within about a week on that same website. We hope you have a great evening. And again, thank you all for joining us.